Alright guys, so this is my first video in a while, and I'm going to be talking about the Broncos' selection of Javante Williams. Not only did they select Javante Williams, 35th overall in this year's draft, they traded up to get him with Atlanta, supposedly so they could leapfrog Miami and get him and add him to their running back room, which already has Melvin Gordon, but we are going to talk about that a little later. So let's just dive into Javante Williams. I actually ended up making a video about him three months ago. I can't really remember what I said, but I do remember saying that he was probably going to be a very good prospect. And at the end of that video, I talked about how, you know, teams that are bad or not. I don't remember. To be honest, I don't remember. Like, this is just me blanking. But I do remember saying how it's usually not wise to use a first round or not a first round, but an early round pick in general on a running back. And I think the Jaguars taking ETN was just ridiculously dumb, especially considering that, you know, that roster has a million holes that can be solved uh, through other means. But they just chose to use first round capital on a running back. I don't know if Trevor Lawrence played a part in that. He had to have played at least some sort of role. I don't know if it was during a pre-draft interview or they just texted him like they texted him Mahomes last year with Clyde edwards alaire and they asked Trevor Lawrence who they wanted. Uh, me, personally, I would have gone O-line all the way. I would have literally spent every single pick on offense, on the offensive side of the ball this year if I was Jacksonville after Trevor Lawrence because, you know, the best way to do it is to build around your rookie quarterback and you just let the defense come later. Now you can turn into the Dallas Cowboys that way, but it's an offensive league now. And to be honest, I thought a lot more offensive players were going to go in round one. Maybe that's just because I'm fantasy biased. I don't know. But I also had nine wide receivers going around one, which just was not the case. So now that we're done talking about the draft, let's just talk about the Broncos. So this is a team that since Peyton Manning has retired has not been good. I don't know if it's because they didn't develop the offensive side of the ball. Uh, very well, or they just went too all in on that Super Bowl 50, or even the year after that, because they still had a good roster. But yeah, the Broncos just haven't been a good team since they won the Super Bowl in 2016, early 2016. And, you know, part of that is because of John Elway. And I do think John Elway receives uh, too much shit for, you know, not being able to solve the quarterback position because. If you look at the roster the Broncos have built, it is phenomenal. It is absolutely stacked at literally every single position, especially since they were able to pick up Fuller and uh, I was about to say Darby off the street, but they didn't really get Darby for that cheap. But they got Fuller. I liked all the moves they made in free agency. You know, George Payton was bringing in Mike Boone from Minnesota. I don't know what role they're going to have Mike Boone serve, especially because I don't think it makes sense to keep Melvin Gordon for $8 million, especially if, you know, especially if you're going to have Javante Williams be your second round pick. And not only that, but they went out of their way to sign Mike Boone. So yeah, and I believe they also can save some money by cutting Melvin Gordon. I don't know exactly how much, but yeah. So why does this pick not make sense? I mean, actually, let's dive into why this pick does make sense for a minute. So if you're going to build around Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater, I guess the way to do it is just to put all your chips in the basket and just give them literally every possible tool to succeed and also make sure that they have literally zero excuses for not succeeding. Because last year, they did build a really, 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 really damn good team. But Sutton got hurt week two. Sutton was out for the year. Fant missed quite a bit of time and had an injury lingering literally all year. By the end of the season, they were down to like their cornerback seven on the depth chart. And yeah, there were just a lot of reasons for the Broncos to not succeed. Not only that, but they kept starting Elijah Wilkinson at right tackle, which was just a formula to give the quarterback trauma. It's okay. He's Justin Fields' problem now. But they did end up losing Philip Lindsay to free agency. And while I'm not thrilled about that as a Lindsay lover and a Broncos fan, I understand it. I understand the business side of sports. I probably wouldn't have been willing to sign him for as much as the Texans got him for. 
Yeah, but Phil is an amazing player. I love everything he did. I appreciate that magical 2018 season he had. But, yeah, it just wasn't really that smart to keep him. Nor did I think it was very smart to sign Melvin Gordon last year. I'm just not a big fan of investing into running backs. especially. Or, and I guess it made sense last year because Drew Locke had a really good uh, final stretch of the season. Albeit they did play some weak opponents. But... He only got worse heading into 2020, and I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it had something to do with COVID, but you know, with COVID, the reason I don't think that's really an excuse is because for offensive skill positions and offensive players as a whole, this rookie class was unbelievable. But yeah, we had Herbert, who was the best rookie quarterback of all time. We had Justin Jefferson, who was the best rookie wide receiver of all time. And behind them, we had the running backs. We had Jonathan Taylor, Antonio Gibson, J.K. Dobbins, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, uh, Cam Akers, who didn't really get going into the later part of the year. But then at wide receiver, other than Justin Jefferson, we had guys like Chase Claypool. We had guys like Jerry Judy. We had guys like C.D. Lamb. And, yeah, it was just an absolutely historic class. You know, we had T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, yada, yada, yada. Just tons and tons and tons of rookies making an immediate impact. And it almost feels like we're spoiled because, you know, all these dynasty guys like to talk about how, you know, guys take a little bit to adapt to the NFL. And there's always that concept of rookie fever. But I don't know. 2020 was just, I don't know. It's probably the biggest outlier year of all time, uh, whether it's sports or anything else. Was Javante Williams a good pick? I don't think so, to be honest, because if you're a team that goes 5-11 and or 6-10, and I can't even remember their record from last year, it's not going to be fixed by a running back. You likely have other issues. I mean, to be honest, I'm still mad that they passed on fields, uh, but I completely understand why they did it. So Tan was their literal number one defense player on the board. So at that point, it's like you'd be stupid to not take him. Now, whether or not you want to agree with that evaluation that's up for debate. But they also traded up to get Javante Williams, which I just don't know. I mean, they did send a fourth round pick, so it really, really, really is not that much. But it's just a running back, man. And like I said, running backs and first round corner. So first round corner and second round running backs is the Vikings philosophy that George Payton uh, brought over from Minnesota. And I guess the Vikings' philosophy for a large part of their existence has been, oh, we're just fine with the Packers just whooping our ass every year. It's good to have some new blood, but also, I, man, I don't know. I am very, very, very skeptical of this Javante Williams pick because, like I said, like I said in my Javante Williams video, he is a fantastic prospect. I absolutely love him. And if I'm not mistaken, he got taken 35th overall, which is where the uh, DeAndre Swift got taken last year, too. So, I mean, they got similar capital. It is just so difficult to gauge what the Broncos were trying to do in this draft. Are they trying to go all in on Teddy Bridgewater? Are they trying to get Aaron Rodgers? I don't know. Because a few hours before the draft, the Packers hit Aaron Rodgers on draft day last year with the Jordan Love selection. So this year, a few hours before the draft, I was saying, uh, Aaron Rodgers hit the Packers with what they hit him with last year. So, were the Broncos trying to get him? I'm not entirely sure. Now, I'd be all for this pick if we were a win-now team, uh, but we are not even close to a win-now team because 5-11 and 11 teams draft running backs, and that is how they stay there. You look at Carolina, you look at, well, not Minnesota because they've been a little bit better since then, but you also look at Cincinnati. They've been terrible since they drafted Mixon. You also look at the Giants. They've been horrific since they drafted Saquon. You look at Carolina, they've been absolute trash since they drafted CMC. Javante Williams will likely be playing the three-down back role because he like he has legitimate three-down workhorse skill. It's just with a position just so replaceable, I just, I don't know. I don't think it was a very good pick. If I could go back and redo it, I would have taken Jenkins. I would have taken Owusu Koromoa. Uh, yeah, but I'm not the one paid to make these decisions. And I also didn't become a fan of football or sign up for YouTube so I could act rationally. So I'm going to line up at the Broncos practice facility tomorrow with pitchforks. But if I wanted to be rational, I would say, okay, 
I'm probably not a fan of this pick now, but when he takes one to the house in September, I'm probably going to be a bit more accepting of this pick. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are not already. Follow me on Twitter. Link is in the description down below. Anyways, guys, have a good day and peace out.